Hi, how can you spot an electric car owner? Well, you don't have to, they'll tell you. <laughs> As you've seen in a recent video, yes, I'm now the owner of an electric car and they're awesome. And after driving it for a couple of weeks now, uh, there's basically three things I really notice. One is the complete lack of, essentially the complete lack of noise. The only noise you get is from the road tires, basically. Uh, the second is that it's very smooth. There's no vibration from the motor when you idle at the lights, when you stop at lights, it's just like complete dead silence. It's absolutely brilliant. But the third and most important, I think, um, and Mrs. E Vblog agrees, is that there is just no pollution at all. You can't smell them. We just get so used to existing internal combustion engine cars. You know, you're loading your kids, you know, the engine's running, you're loading your kids into the car. It takes forever and the car's filling up. You know, even though it's just sitting there, it's just filling up with the fumes and you're just ah, choking on it. So you don't really notice it until you drive your electric car and then you go hop in to your old internal combustion car and you just go, <laughs> this is terrible. Mrs. E V blog called now calls her car the stinky car because it yeah they just stink. So getting rid of like air pollution is one of the big things. Yeah, we can talk about global warming and all, you know, CO2 emissions and all that sort of stuff. But a really important thing that can make a tangible difference now to everyone, everyone's lives, including saving lives, uh, because a lot of people die from air pollution. Here's the thing, the Australian Institute of Health uh, reported in 2011, 3,000 premature deaths each year result of air pollution. About half that comes from transportation. I believe the figure is like even higher than that that basically most air pollution in cities comes from vehicles cars buses trucks and you're just breathing all this stuff in absolutely terrible for your health and this is where electric cars come in no emissions so your cars and your trucks and your buses, they all emit, uh, you know, petrol, diesel, gas, whatever it is, they all emit um, all sorts of horrible stuff. You're talking carbon dioxide, you're talking nitrogen oxide, particulate matter, benzenes, all sorts of crap just spewing into the air. Absolutely terrible for your health. So uh, to me, this is one of the most important benefits of electric car is just cleaning up the air that we breathe every single day. So anyway, everyone's talking about electric cars, right? They're the hot new thing, and rightly so, they're awesome. Uh, highly recommend you get one if you can afford it, because they're still quite expensive. Anyway, I had no idea that electric buses were actually a huge thing. There's almost like half a million electric buses in the world. Um, unfortunately, you don't hear about them because like 90, 95% of them are in China because China, of course, has a huge uh, pollution problem and they're trying to solve that with electric buses. But I had no idea Australia actually runs some electric buses as well. And for the last 12 months, we had an electric bus trial right here in Sydney um, uh, at a company called uh, Transit systems. I, I saw this on the news and I thought, oh wow, electric buses, that's cool. I'd love to check those out. So these four electric buses have been running on real routes around Sydney um, for the last 12 months and apparently it's been a big success. So I thought I'd contact Transit Systems, see if we can get a look at this. And they said, yeah, no worries, drop on by and we'll show you the electric bus. So when they've got four buses, um, 16 hours uh, like run time on these things so they can do a couple of shifts easily and uh, you know they've got gigantic batteries in them order of magnitude bigger than my Hyundai Ionic let me tell you we'll uh, see that in a minute so they've been running these routes here in, in Sydney and there's all the charging stuff in the back so I thought it'd be cool to check these out so let's go to the transit systems depot here in Leichhardt let's go oh and I did shoot this intro actually driving to transit systems in my electric car I thought that'd be cool but Unfortunately, my um, RX0 Mark II camera um, shot doesn't have autofocus, so it I must have accidentally focused on my arm when I pressed record, and it the whole thing's out of focus, so... Oh! So yeah, I got like 15 minutes of out of focus footage. Yeah, professional YouTuber. And this is actually going to be a cut down version of the video. I have the full version over 40 minutes long over on my EV Discover channel linked in down below. So go check that out. I've got lots of other cool videos over there too. If you're not subscribed to EV Discover, you should be. And here it is, fully electric bus, one of four on trial here in Sydney. Well, there's actually a fifth one, which is a different brand, but where's the branding? Where's the electric bus branding, guys? 
It's, you know, okay, it's, it's zero emissions, but there's no electric bus branding, but it's fully electric. Let's go check it out. And manufactured by Gemilang, and uh, you can hear probably a very noisy uh, diesel bus, but here we go. These are fully electric. One of the advantages is, is that they're completely silent. So, well, manufactured by BYD, they've got the branding on the uh, steering wheel there, and uh, we can have a closer look, but uh, it, apart from that, it's just a regular bus. You wouldn't know the difference. Fully air conditioned. In fact, uh, the, <laughs> the air conditioner on this uses a ton more energy than my fully electric car does. So there you go. We've got social distancing stickers. Sit here, sit here, sit here. Thank you very much. But uh, yeah, you wouldn't notice a difference apart from there's no emissions, so these things don't smell. There's no, uh, you know, motor vibration, things like that. And they're completely silent, which is absolutely fantastic and just a generally a smoother ride. And here's the back. This is the business end, what we want to see. And I'm here with Andrew. He's the uh, leading hand. He's going to tell us all about it. Andrew, take us for a walkthrough. Yeah, cool. Start at the top. Uh, we have the high voltage distribution box, main Isolator, this is the most important thing if we're working on them. We've got to disconnect them, otherwise uh, we're going to be fried. So this is the main inverter here? Yeah, so this is your uh, DC to DC charger. So that puts power into the low voltage side. Uh, left and right we have the vehicle to grid or motor controllers. They put um, power from the batteries into the motors, depending on vehicle demand, and also power from the grid into the batteries. And these two black boxes on the side. That's just a simple cooling system for the motors. They're, they run an oil cooler with a, with a coolant um, returning to two radiator fans that's on the side here. Below that we have our air compressor, basically that just runs on a, uh, uh, on a motor and the system runs like any other heavy vehicle, pneumatics. So instead of running from a uh, belt from a regular motor, yeah. it's running uh, from the battery? Pneumatic brakes, ah, suspension, right. doors, um, that sort of thing. And on the left hand side we have our power steering system. So again, this is a little power steering pump uh, driven by a motor that's electric. Obviously um, on, a, on a conventional vehicle it's driven, gear driven from the motor. And then obviously either side you have your uh, radiator fans to, to, for your, this is just cooling for the motor. The batteries have a separate cooling system up top which, which is sort of a sealed Unit. How do they cool the battery? It's, uh, it, do they pump uh, some sort of fluid through them? Yeah, Is they, the they liquid just, uh, water cooled? Water -cooled. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Right. And that, that's a separate system. That's, that's isolated from, from this. It's just the motor. And then all these modules up here are just the various uh, modules to, to relay the information. You know, uh, throttle demand and uh, vehicle load and, and that sort of thing. Right. Uh, are there any data loggers in here for monitoring uh, the... Yes, they, they're fitted with a, a, a data logger that takes the uh, information from the vehicle system and uh, relays that via a, uh, via a cell SIM card. Oh, right, okay, so they come back in uh, real time from the buses? Yeah, already. so we can see state of charge, motor controller, uh, motor controller and motor temperatures, mm -hmm. uh, vehicle speed, I mean even down to how many passengers so how does this uh, chassis differ from a, uh, a diesel one? Is this like the same physical back where the diesel motor would go? Or no, I think the, the chassis would be made specifically for the, uh, to house all of this stuff. Right. Uh, so far as your, your front axle, that's standard heavy vehicle. Uh, it's a ZF front axle. Your brakes are, I think they're Norbremshi. Suspension, you know, they're all sort of Wabco and and you know, off-the-shelf type heavy vehicle industry type stuff. I believe that power steering pumps is ZF as well. And then I guess the Gamma Lang make the body, so they do all the interior fit out um, with, with whatever spec uh, the customer wants. So from a maintenance uh, point of view, how does an electric bus differ after a year? You've, had, you've been maintaining these things for a year, what is the difference? Uh, we don't have to change engine anymore. But I mean, so far as maintenance on brakes, you do still have to do you know, brake inspections. So it's checking your pad wear. Uh, we are seeing uh, significantly less pad wear and that's probably due to the regenerative braking. So that's fantastic. How much regen braking would you typically get? We've seen up to 30% right. on a trip. Yep. Um, that does differ. Obviously Sydney 
you know, if you're going up and down hills, you might get a bit more. But yeah, so far as like your hubs, so your reduction drives in your hubs, they need to have their oils changed every six to 12 months. Um, power steering oil, you know, that's, that gets changed at an interval. I think that's 12 months. We don't have a motor in here. Where not, is it? Not in the back there. They're hub motors. They're on the, on the wheels. They're actually on the wheels? Well, so you've got your, your hub and then you've got a reduction and then you've got your motor bolted right, straight there. Right, it's right next to it. So yep. just the rear wheels? Just the rear wheels, yeah. Right. No, uh, no all-wheel drive here. Got it. <laughs> why, why did they put them on the rear and not the front? It's just easier probably, to do the probably, steering? I would say definitely, uh, definitely space. Mm -hmm. um, the logistics of, of having a steer axle that's also a drive axle. Um, yep. There's a lot less moving parts and a lot less hassle. I see over here the charger behind you there. That is a Type 2 AC charger, is it not? Uh, yes, it is. So there are two ports and they go to the two vehicle to grid units mm -hmm. that then transfer that power to the batteries. We've got batteries up on the roof and we've got, I believe it is two battery packs uh, underneath. Okay, you needed that for the extra range? Uh, that... Yes. But I would have thought having the batteries on the top would be a weight issue. It would be a pendulum issue. Uh, not so much. Our gas buses have weight on the roof and they handle that right. very, uh, very well. But yeah, again, that was done in the design. BYD designed uh, the vehicle the best distribution of weight uh, with their battery packs. All right, tell us about the uh, batteries in this thing. There's two batteries. Yes, we have the ones on the roof and ones underneath. They are a lithium iron phosphate battery at 368 kilowatt hours. That's 10 times more than my Hyundai Ionic uh, car. That's 10 times the battery capacity. How, wow. much, how much does the Ionic weigh? I don't know, a ton and a half maybe? Yeah, well this is pushing close to 18 and a half ton. 18 and a half ton bus. 18 and a half ton. <laughs> wow, and how much do the batteries weigh? They weigh two and a half ton. Two and a half ton each or total? Uh, total. Total, so there's one down the bottom there somewhere? There's one down the, the bottom yep. and then the other ones, the main ones are up on the roof. Standard like suspension, so they've got they can sway bar legs, sort yep. of prevent the body roll. Um, right. It's not really an issue. Okay, so I assume they mount on the top just because the well the weight has to be distributed along the chassis. Yes. But they probably didn't have room under the front of the bus. Or? No, and, and you obviously want to keep clearance, oh, vehicle clearance, yeah, vehicle clearance. clearance, clearance. Sure. There are more up the top than there are down the bottom. Right, and what else have we got on the roof here? Oh, uh, you've got your AC system. Our AC system is a TKE twelve hundred unit. Okay, the maximum power consumption is eleven kilowatts of power from the bus batteries when running full cooling. That's with all the fans on high speed. It is 3.7 when the compressor is running at minimum capacity with fans at low speed. 3.7 to 11 just for the aircon to keep the passengers happy. You know, wow. yeah. in the, in the, uh, so the heat, of Austra heat of Australian Sydney <laughs> summer, uh, they get quite hot. And what is the, uh, that low profile thing along the top there? Uh, that's, that is your AC. Oh, that is the AC. Yeah, so that'll, that'll have your condenser units and, and all your other uh, gas for the air con. And you've got a different charger on this side here. Why is that charger different to the one on the other side? Uh, that's for a different model. A different model? You've got one other different model? Yes, we have a UTOM. And that looks like a fast DC charger. I am right. There you go. DC fast charger. So that bus would be DC charging, whereas the four that we're looking at, they're uh, AC going in. Yep, but yep, they correct. convert them to DC. Uh, very correct. All right. Yep. Uh, tires, Andrew, are these like special low energy ones like you have on regular EVs or are they just standard? No, they're a standard heavy vehicle tire. Standard heavy vehicle standard tire. Standard heavy vehicle tire. Yep. Now we're going to drive into the pit. Hopefully not into the pit. Oh, well, not into it. <laughs> Has anyone ever done that? Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Never happened, sure. Uh, first time for everything, could happen to me today. <laughs> Alright, we're going down under the pit here, and this is something you won't see every day under an electric bus. So, the, uh, what do we got here? Our, up here is our batteries. Right. Uh, all nice and covered up. We have our rear axle, and we have our big hub motors. And obviously, uh, you've got your, your rear braking booster. Nothing too different about that. Over here, we have our cooling system. So we have uh, an oil to uh, fluid coolant. 
uh, system to keep the motors cool. So that gauge on the dash is just indicating the temperature of your motors. So there's a, there's, say, there's a hub reduction. Uh, there, there's a hub reduction yep. uh, gear system in there, but apart from that, everything, else. everything else is pretty conventional. From here forward, it's just a normal bus. Just a normal bus. Just a normal it. bus. Oh yeah, that one's got a nice new hose. Somebody's replaced that, was that you? Uh, yeah, that was me. <laughs> that was you, okay. <laughs> it gets all pretty grimy under here, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, the roads are not, uh, not, not kind. Right. Especially when you hit something, you get showered in it. And these are your suspension? Yeah, these are the uh, uh, torsion rods, yep. airbags, nice um, soft ride, mm -hmm. uh, sway bar, big, big sway bars. Oh yeah. Sway bar links. So a lot of this, all this stuff is, is standard yeah. heavy, heavy vehicle yep. industry. So uh, like you'd get on any, uh, any normal, normal bus. Right, except they got tiny little hub nut. Like they're remarkably small, aren't they? The motors. I mean, yeah, they are. They're just uh, uh, probably equivalent to you know a little bit bigger than what's on my Hyundai Ionic, uh, which is a hundred kilowatt motor, and that's about it. Yeah, one hundred and fifty kilowatts. One hundred and fifty kilowatts on the plate there. Yep. All right. And five hundred fifty newton meters of torque. Uh, one hundred and fifty kilowatts. Okay, there you go. Wow. That's the hub motor. Thank you very much, Andrew, for the underneath tour. Robbie is going to tell us about the other electric uh, bus you've got, the Utong. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so we, uh, we had a Utong uh, here on, on trial uh, for a couple of months. Uh, I needed to, re have to buy another bus as a replacement, and I got approval to replace a diesel bus with a Utong. Uh, it's been in service now approximately nearly a year, I suppose. Or actually, Same length as the current buses? Buses, yeah, yep. maybe a bit shorter. It's like Holden versus Ford with the drivers. Some drivers prefer the BYD over the Utong. Battery capacity, battery distance, uh, state of charge is very much similar uh, to the uh, BYD. Do we have range issues on either of these buses for daily commutes at all? No, not at all. When we first started the trial, I limited them to about uh, six to eight hours a day on short shifts. I said that would run for around four to six weeks. After two weeks, I had confidence in the vehicles and we extended them out uh, to probably 10, 12 hour shifts. Uh, we ran that for a couple of weeks and now we extended that out to any, any, any in-service run uh, they, they, they can operate on. As I said before, we just treat them like a normal bus now. They do the same work, um, the same services as all our diesels. And uh, what state of charge do they come back to with after a typical day? So a typical day here is a little bit different when you're in our inner city area. Uh, an average eight hour shift or an eight hour day is only around that 100, 120 kilometres. Obviously, we've extended that out, so they go out maybe three, four times a day. They're averaging around 200, 250 kilometres, and that's around between 12 and 14 hour a day. Um, you've got to remember our congestion. We sit and don't move, so we spend a lot of time in traffic. So, hence the low kilometres, but the big shift or spread of hours for the shifts. Um, they generally come back with around between 30 and 40% charge left. Uh, they're regening. They're regening around 30 to 40 percent uh, regen, uh, which was a lot higher than I actually expected. Yeah, it's hot. With our with our routes being inner city, bus stops are very close. Um, so I did um, have concerns in the early days that I thought we wouldn't get enough speed up to get regen from stop to stop to stop. Right. That's been totally opposite to what I what I expected. Uh, the regen has gone far above my expectations. Have we haven't had any failures on the electrical side of the thing, like the motors, the uh, the chargers, the controllers, anything like that? No, we haven't had any failures. Um, we've had some driver error failures, which was water getting on the dash with the window left left open. But from a hole in hole, no, we've had no failures. Wow. Um, we're currently running at 0.01 cent per k at the moment. It's the operating cost, which is uh, compared to a gas bus, yeah. it's, it's phenomenal. But it is early days. Any, anything that we've had to do, if there is a problem, was covered by warranty. And Andrew would have talked about the general servicing that we had to do, uh, and that's the only money that uh, we've had to spend on these vehicles at this stage. And uh, what's, what's the top speed of this bad boy? 
you know. Uh, <laughs> you haven't, you haven't taken it up there? Depend on, depend on what, what, uh, what speed zone I'm in. Right, okay. But it, get, but it gets there very fast. Right. Does it have like a uh, cruise control and all uh, that? It does not have cruise control. Right. Uh, does it have any other um, uh, safety features that you find on regular electric cars like lane guidance, assistance and collision? warning and uh, all that it, all that fancy from standard it does not have any of that fitted right um it does have hill assist okay uh which is which is quite good mm -hmm. on some of on some of the hilly streets of sydney yep my electric car's got like an auto hold uh brake system so i can take my foot off the pedal when yes. i'm stopped does this have anything like yes, that yes that's good it's got an auto hold oh okay yes. right and it'll hold on hills as well yes oh great but Terrific. if we want to compare the um like the motor output to say like a tesla model s yep let's do the, it Tesla model this has a front and rear combined output of 615 kilowatts. So there are more powerful electric cars than this bus, but this thing can't, but they can't haul. How, how many cars can, can yeah. haul 27 standing people and 35 seating? <laughs> 35 seated. I don't think a Tesla can do that. But um, no failures in any of the charge controllers, any of these boxes. None of those, none of none the uh, magic boxes. boxes. Yep. We haven't had to put any of the electric smoke back in. <laughs> Um, these are fitted with a fire suppression system as well, oh, and well, up and up on the roof. Okay, what is that under here? The fire suppression uh, yeah, system. Yes, we've got a um, detection line. Oh, okay, right. And nozzles here. Yep. And over there, we're running a dry chemical. Okay. Obviously, not going to be water. <laughs> right, and that will automatically just pump this entire section full of chemical, dry yeah. chemical. Yeah. And that'll be once the detection line is uh, is sensing that there's a fire. So is this a dedicated spot just for charging these? Or? Uh, yes, it is, yes. I mean, it does, it does get used during the day for other, other uh, workshop-related activities, but um, the electric buses have priority place for charging. So what's the uh, efficiency figure in kilowatt hours per 100 Ks? My, my electric car gets about 11. So this is about uh, uh, 110, give or, give or take, depending on driving conditions. Right, so order of magnitude more, but we are hauling... A lot more. What, what does this weigh again? I think we said fully loaded, it's, it can be rated to 18 tonnes. 13.8 unloaded. So that's, that actually is about the same efficiency uh, based on weight, because mine, I don't know, what, one and a half tonnes? This, this yep. is 10 times more, but, and it uses 10 times more energy. So efficiency is probably about the same. Yeah. Nice. And uh, what's the expected expected battery life have you uh, seen any drop in capacity do we know we haven't seen a drop in capacity they, they're rated to 22,000 cycles of the battery it will obviously decrease gradually over time they're warranted for eight years okay that will decrease to no less than 60 percent and that and that doesn't mean that they're not going to be used they'll just no. be repurposed uh, I think the the gentleman over at BYD says that they will repurpose them for things like uh, people's solar home setups and there's lots of people who will buy used bat car EV car battery packs yeah they're not they're not they're no longer good for the application that they have but they've yeah. still got plenty of life in them and everyone's uh, been talking about wanting me to do a video on wireless road charging and it's kind of like the solar roadways thing it works but it's not going to be practical. When the buses come back here, they've, they've got the range they've got, they come back at the end of the day, they come to a known location, you plug them in, you can get a super efficient uh, direct charge straight into the battery. There's just absolutely no point to have like a bus lanes, charging coil, wireless charging coils under bus lanes in roads. It doesn't really solve any practical problem. It's just pointless. It's solar roadways all over again. Okay, tell us about the instrument uh, display here. So we have uh, left and right um, motor, con motor temperature. Mm -hmm. We have uh, state of charge, obviously uh, gear selector, power draw. So currently we're sitting at four kilowatts of draw. Because we've got the aircon on, even though we're idle. So yes. yep. And obviously that'll include the, uh, the draw for the power steering pump, air compressor, yep. and all those types of things. Because um, they run on the, the, the high voltage side. Mm -hmm. And we have our low voltage uh, low voltage battery. So it's got a regular bus battery. So that operates all the uh, all the normal things: interior mm -hmm. lights, indicators, dash lights, horn, um, all of the things that uh, uh, a, a conventional bus has. Yeah. And uh, it's got an RPM indicator. Does that? Yes, that's the the, the motor RPM. Okay, so it does actually. Is that just familiarity for the drivers? Because you don't really need to know that, do you? Uh, not particularly. There's no uh, no need to. Yeah, that's uh, I guess a choice by BYD. And the those top gauges up there, red and green top gauges. Ah, uh, that's so your pressure? operational air pressure. So mm -hmm. uh, your primary tank and your secondary tank. So I'm using the air pressure. Right. 
and you know, off. pumping that up. And yep. But apart from that, fairly conventional uh, for a bus. Yeah, um, pretty pretty standard. Nothing really uh, other than the 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 electric motor that that differs from uh, mm -hmm. from any other bus size wise. It's the same. But uh, there's no uh, gear in in this. It's just drive, and that's it. Yep. Just put it in D, and off you go. Yep. You won't hear a gear change. And there's a fire suppression system here. They've never had to use it, but there's uh, fire suppression systems for the uh, battery uh, packs and also the uh, controllers in the back. Just the buttons for drive, neutral, reverse, and uh, it's looks got a radio and not much else. Looks like a pretty much a conventional bus. And we've got various uh, cameras up here. We've got one in each door, one for the bus and rear and front as well and we've got radio systems and air cons and air con controller pretty much a conventional bus Andrew's gonna take us for a ride let's go oh that's smooth wow very little vibration well there's none really is there it's just rocking so how does this uh, compare Andrew driving around the depot uh, definitely quieter. <laughs> right. Do people not hear it coming or? Uh, well, yeah, they don't hear it coming, but at the speeds we're uh, driving in the depot, you can obviously hear the, the tyre noise. Uh, tyre noise. Yeah. The tyre noise would be the main noise, wouldn't it? I mean, yeah. So how often do these come back to the uh, depot every day? Uh, yeah, so they go out in the morning and they come back uh, around 9.30, 10 o'clock. They get put on charge. Uh, and then they go back out again in the afternoon peak. So this is a Type 2 uh, three-phase charger, 480 volts, 63 amps, and they've got two of them. Uh, I assume that each one goes to uh, the separate uh, pack, and it's just a regular, um, you know, uh, like high-power three-phase Type 2 charger, and you simply just, they've got these dedicated sta stations here, just plug it in after it comes back from its shift and it's ready, it's good to go for another, you know, day or even two, um, depending on the uh, usage uh, requirements of this thing. So on the Gemalang BYD, the charging's in the side. It has two chargers for the battery packs on the roof and the battery packs underneath. So they charge individually, but then they combine? They combine their power source right. to run the motors and everything else. So these are the chargers. Oh, dual wielding, dual wielding. Got to go. The double barrel, it's yep. plugged in. So it should come up with state of charge. State and, of charge. And also how long before it's fully charged. 424 volts AC, 55 amps. I oh, know, 108, it's just got in the other one. And uh, estimated it's 55 minutes to charge. So once the charging process starts, yep. it will turn on the fans to keep the the battery pack's cool as well, so it automatically uh, does the cooling as it's charging. Is there is the regen system adjustable so that the driver can adjust the regen? Or? The, the driver cannot adjust the regen. Um, it is set, but it's usually set for the, um, the routes it's going to operate on. In theory, could you operate this as a single pedal without using the brake? Can you? Will, yes. it, will, it, will it come to a full stop? Yes, it will. Right, in what sort of distance will it? Depending on speed, but if you're doing 20 kilometres an hour, you'll stop within a couple of metres. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's that, pretty that's aggressive. That's a decent amount of region. Yeah, it's very yeah. aggressive. So in bus world, um, we've got retarders on diesel buses. It does the same thing. Oh, yeah, so, so bus drivers are used to that sort kind of driving. I was going to ask. Where they're not they... using the brake pedal so much. Right, yeah. okay, so it's not that different to drive for them. No, not really, no right. really. It gets off the mark a lot quicker than any diesel bus. Yep. Um, but yeah, in terms of, of stopping, it's basically the same. And we're in the live uh, control room here where they uh, get real-time reports and monitoring from the buses and uh, control the network. But we're now going to have a look at the Vera City system and how that monitors the real time data from the buses.